Hi guys. So I thought I'd create this really, really quick tutorial. And it's a great tutorial as well. And it's going to be about um, properties within your application. So many of the applications that I've inherited or I've seen, they, they use a custom property framework where basically someone's written their own framework to load up different properties in different environments. Well, with Spring Boot, um, that actually comes out of the box. You get that functionality for you. And all you need to do is pass in spring.active.profile um, property. So it's a system property getting passed into your application when it starts. And what that'll do is automatically load your properties file based on whatever that property value is. So it'll be application dash your environment dot properties. So it's a fantastic way to load your properties into your application. Or what you can do alternatively is actually have a dedicated service or resource that will inject all the properties dynamically into your application when it starts running. So I hope you guys enjoy this very quick tutorial. I'm sure you find it useful. So thanks. Hi guys, so in today's um, tutorial we're going to be talking about externalized configuration and more specifically externalized uh, property configuration. So typically in, in your applications you're, you're going to have multiple profiles or multiple environments so that's going to be local, dev, test, production, you probably have many more or you may even have less. But what you want to do is generate one artifact that's going to be propagated through them environments without regenerating the, the artifact in between. Very, very important concept there. But what Spring will allow you to do is use the same application code in the different environments um, based on the profile when you, when you start up your application. So you're going to pass in uh, an environment variable, the Spring uh, profiles active uh, variable. And based on that value, you're going to load up a different property file per environment. And that's going to instantiate your classes, your, your, your Java beans and your application so that you're essentially calling the correct values in, in the right environment. So the purpose of that is to remove any application configuration from your Java class files and ensure that all your configuration is in your, your properties files. Or if you want to get more advanced, you'd actually have a config server and you would actually call out to an external web service and retrieve your properties. But in this case, we're going to focus on the property files. And a great way to test if your application is doing this correctly or doing it very well is at any given time, if you can happily say that if you delete the properties files and you can release your application open source, then that's great. So let's get started. Let's go ahead and create a Spring Boot application. So we want to create a Spring Starter application. Um, we're going to just create a simple properties stash example, jar, properties example, yes, 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 next. We just want the web dependency for this. And go ahead and finish. So now we have a properties example application. I'm just going to go ahead and delete the boilerplate code. And as you see, we have a properties example application. So in our source main resources, you're going to see an application.properties file. So this file is going to be automatically instantiated or automatically um, loaded when the application starts. So the Spring Boot is going to look for this application.properties in a few different locations. It's going to look for it in, uh, I think there's four locations. It's going to look in the slash config subdirectory. And with the current directory, it's going to look in the class path slash config. So if you have slash config in here or the class path root. And because source main resources um, values are going to be placed in the class path, then application.properties will automatically be loaded in this case, in this application. So what we want to do is go ahead and actually write a property in there. So I'm going to create one called application.name. And I'm going to call this properties application default and I'm going to create another one called username I'm going to call it Philip save that and if you go into your properties example application what we want to do is implement a command line runner okay so go ahead and 
and bring in the unimplemented method. So this is going to run once our application or once our Spring application that run actually creates our um, Spring container. So what we want to do is simply create a logger. So go ahead and bring in your logger. I'm just going to copy some code in here. And then you're going to want to say log dot info. We're going to say application name. And then we're going to type the username. And we're going to have our application name and our username. And what we're going to do is want to inject our two values. So application name and our user. We're going to use Spring's add value annotation. So if you go add value, and then we're going to bring in first property, which was the application name, and the second property, which was the username. So we're going to fix our imports and bring in log j Oh, wrong loggers in here. JBoss, no thank you. Um, bring in the SLF4J. Control Shift O, Control Shift F, save. Run as Spring Boot Application. And you should see the two properties I put it application name and username. Okay, so that's great. So now that's a default one for our current environment. But as I mentioned earlier, we're going to have multiple environments. So we're going to have local dev, test, production, etc., etc. So what we want to do is go ahead and copy that application of properties. I never suggest copy and pasting anything, but in this case, I'm going to break my rule. So application dev and application test. So let's go ahead and actually change this. So in our, we're going to delete the username from them and you want to go ahead and change it from default and dev to dev and in test you're going to change that to test control save and then what you're going to do is change the spring active profile that you actually pass into your application so if you go down to this properties example go to your arguments and in your virtual machine arguments you want to going to pass in so on this D and you're going to type spring.profiles.active equals dev. So now when you apply that and you run that, you should now see that the property I put it is applica properties application dev. So what that's done is loaded the application.properties and then it's loaded the application.dev.properties. So it's, it's basically replaced the application.properties application name with the application properties from with the application name from the application dev properties and again you want to go ahead and stop that and you can run we can run that in test so we're changing the the environment so you can pass this environment um, in through say if you're using cloud foundry you can pass it in there through a yaml file or you can you can pass it in if you're running on a say unix node you can pass it in through a shell script whatever way you're automating that. So in test, now we should see our application test and our username is felt. So that's a great way how you can um, split your properties up and split your configuration through your different environments. In the past, you know, I've worked with code bases and then it was unfortunate back, you know, 10 years ago, a lot of people had to write their own frameworks to, to do this kind of stuff, but it's great Spring actually offers this out of the box. And I think Spring offers 15 different ways of loading properties into your application. And this is just two ways. So you have a massive or huge choice of how you actually want to configure your, your properties. And um, what I would recommend is if you're externalizing passwords that you actually encrypt the passwords and you have some kind of uh, decryption uh, mechanism in your property files so that when your application starts, it, know it knows that they're encrypted, decrypts them, and your application runs. Because you never want to store plain text passwords in your code base. 
So thank you for checking out this very quick tutorial today and I will see you next time. So be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Thank you.